Hey guys, it's Melanie from MelanieKham.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we're gonna make this blanket. It's a giant granny square. This is actually an older project and in light of what is happening right now with coronavirus, many of you are at home and this has just been kind of sitting in my archives. I used to sell it, but I decided to pull it out of the archives and make it available for you guys. Um, in case you wanna have some new projects to work on, keep your hands busy and stay motivated and productive. As always, all the details can be found first link down below, um, I'll have some more pictures and uh, all the written instructions and all that good stuff for you. So let's jump right in. We can make this adorable blanket. Hey everyone, welcome to the Granny Square baby blanket. You will need three balls of the purple blanket yarn. Well, really any color for that matter. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like with two different hook sizes. This is actually the one that I have started with this hook size, which is the 12 millimeter. But I also wanna show you what it would look like with the L hook. This is what the package recommends and it creates a much smaller, much tighter weave. So I do wanna show you both, but if you are making this for a baby, I do recommend using the smaller hook size so that we mitigate any potential issues. But of course, any sort of crochet projects with these large spots, any sort of blankets that have anything like that, um, obviously needs to be given to baby with supervision. So now we're gonna get started again using the L hook. If you're comfortable with a magic circle, you can use that, but um, I will show you the way that does not utilize the magic circle for any of my beginners that are maybe a little afraid of a magic circle, but you certainly can use that. Let's get in nice and close and get started on our granny square baby blanket. Okay, we're gonna start with a slip knot, which basically here's the free end. I wrap that around my fingers and pull it through, leaving a loop. Then you insert your hook into the loop and you can pull on the free end in order to tighten it up. The next thing we need to do is chain four. One, two, three, four. And then we are going to insert our hook into the first chain. We're gonna slip stitch, which is yarn over, pull through and then continue pulling that through the hook or the loop that was already on your hook. This created a little circle for us and we are gonna be putting all of our stitches inside the circle. So it's helpful to sort of find it with your fingers and kind of hold them there so that you kind of know where that is. Now we need to chain three. One, two, and three. And then we need to double crochet into the center of our circle here. And the double crochet is yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. We've got three loops on the hook, yarn over two times, two. Let me try that one more time. I think I maybe said that a little bit confusingly. <laughs> so again, a double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, three loops, yarn over, first two loops, yarn over, next two loops. And this initial chain three counts as our first double crochet. We are gonna be working in groups of three double crochets around our granny square. So since we've created one, now we need to do a chain two. One, two, and this is actually the corner. Then we need to do another three double crochet cluster, inserting it into this circle again. So yarn over, insert your hook. There's one double crochet. There's two double crochet and our third. And if it starts to bunch up, you can just kind of scooch our stitches over a little bit. Okay, chain two again. One, two, and another double crochet cluster. Okay. 
If you need to move anything around, go ahead and do that. And you can see how it's taking shape. Now we need to chain two and finish up our last cluster right here in the center. chain two because we need to do that to finish out this corner and then we are going to slip stitch it to the top of the uh, chain three that we did initially remember that does count as our double crochet so then we will insert our hook into the top chain just like so we're gonna get two strands of yarn here so on the top chain there's still one behind here and then we are going to yarn over, bring it through, and then bring that through the loop on your hook. So here's it for, here it is forming. Now the center circle might be a little bit large. If you did a magic circle, you can yank on the free end. And even if you did one of the uh, chain circles, you can still watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull on this chain on the free end here, and it's gonna sort of cinch everything up a little bit. And you can see here, here is how it's forming so far. What we're gonna do is do another chain three again. And this is always what we're gonna do to get started. This does count as one double crochet. Then what we're gonna do is actually double crochet back behind us in this corner spot. So we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna insert our two double crochets because that chain three counted as the first one and we need to do groups of three. So you can see when you do that, it just sort of scooches it over. So we'll put our third number three, and then we're gonna yarn over and begin our next three double crochet cluster in this corner. All right, there's one, chain two, one, two, and then what happens is we need to have another cluster here in the corner. So we're gonna, we did our chain two, then we're gonna yarn over and do our second three double crochet cluster here. Okay. So there's gonna be our new corner the next time we go around. So now I want you to finish that. So there's two, three double crochets here. It needs to be the same here and the same here. And then when we get back around to this side, I will meet you there and we will finish up this round. We need to finish this corner. So go ahead and yarn over and double crochet in here. And connect it just like we did in that first round. So in the top of this turning chain, we will give it a slip stitch and then we're going to do the same thing going around again this time it's going to look a little different so i'll show you what that is chain three go back behind us and do two double crochets in that corner we have this space here so it's not a chain one space because we don't chain one in between them but we do need to place another three double crochet cluster here Okay, so same thing. We're just gonna insert that here. And then that's gonna be the same going all the way around. Every time you're increasing, you're going another round, there's gonna be more of those to do. I'll just get larger and larger. I'll show you the, uh, the one that I've already started here in just a minute. But see, this spot does need a double crochet cluster, and then we'll just continue around and do the corners exactly like we were. Okay, so here is how it has looked so far. You can see what a cool look that is. This is the granny square. This is the exact same thing we've been doing. You can see right here in the center. Here's our center with our one, two, three, four, and then it just grows from there. This is one skein of yarn. So right now we are 24 inches wide by 23. It's basically a square. Okay, so let's add this new ball of yarn. This is the hook that I was using on this example. So use the same hook size that you have been working on with your project. 
And what I'm going to do here is I have one double crochet, so I need to finish my three double crochet cluster. And we're going to yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through. We're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. And then we're going to get our new yarn from the new ball. So this is our working yarn. This is attached to our new ball of yarn. We're going to put that in the hook and we're going to pull that through. We're going to tighten everything down. Then we'll do another stitch to finish our three double crochet cluster. And that's how you do it. So you basically start your stitch and then you pull it through with your new yarn. Now I've got some tails here. We can weave those in later. And as I go, I'm going to, because this has some space in between them, we will, we will need to weave those in with a yarn needle just to make sure everything's really secure and makes this blanket appropriate for the wash. But then we will continue going down. So you can see here that now I have lots of these three double crochet clusters to do, you know, along the side of the blanket. So we need to do new clusters in between each three double crochet set. So you do new ones all there, and then you still do the same thing in your corners. Here's my corner before, two three double crochet with two, a chain two in between. So now go ahead, keep going all the way around until you have used up your three balls of yarn. And once those three balls of yarn have been completed, then I will meet you back here and I'll show you how to weave in all of the ends. We'll take a look at the size and any other things that I would like to add. So happy stitching, get comfortable, show a, put on a movie. All right, so I have completed all three balls of yarn for this granny square crochet blanket. We are measuring about 41 inches square. If you are using the same size hook and the same type of yarn as me, you should be close to that, no problem if not. Um, if you're using a different yarn or a different hook, then the sizing will probably be different. This is a really good size, baby size or even a, a lap size. So once you reach the end of your round, you may still have some yarn left over, but you don't want to get started on another round and not be able to finish it. So make sure when you're done with your round, see I do have some yarn left over, but that's not nearly enough to get all the way around. So that's okay. We will finish it off here. And all you need to do to finish it off is just yarn over and pull that through. I don't have a ton of yarn, but you can trim your yarn off if you need to before so it doesn't get tangled in there. But you just do that and then give that a tug and that will fasten it off. Now what you want to do is cut your tail, leave, um, you know, about six inches. And then what you're going to do is use a yarn needle like this. There's metal ones as well, so whatever you have on hand. And we're going to weave in this tail. And we are also going to weave in any of our tails from when we joined our other two balls of yarn. Just thread the needle. And you want to go back and forth within your blanket to make sure that everything is really secure. So I'll go through here. And that's why you don't want your tail to be too short. You want to give yourself the chance to weave it in really well. We can bring it up through here. You want to try to keep it hidden. With this yarn, it's sometimes hard to tell, but this is the back side of the blanket. This is the front side. So I came up this way and now I can sort of change directions. That's pretty much all there is to it. Once you feel like it's secure, then you can trim it and you'll want to make sure you do that for all of your tails. Now, I don't feel like this needs a border, but I will link two videos from previous projects underneath this video that do show you how to do a border with this type of yarn. I hope you had as much fun creating this project as I did. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions at all, and I hope you enjoyed this project. Happy stitching. All right, what'd you guys think? Not too bad, right? Really fun, really simple, beginner friendly, 
giant granny square and this is the blanket yarn but you can use different types of yarn i'd be excited to see you sort of make this to your own if you're watching this later this won't apply but if we are still in the thick of coronavirus craziness obviously my sincerest well wishes to you all stay safe out there everybody and uh yeah i'll see you in the next video bye